How are you today? It is a wonderful morning. It is beautiful. I have to have some coffee. I just brought it down. And so, here's the coffee. Not creamy, oily. <laughs> Hi, Stacey. Good morning. Hi, Marina. Good morning. Um, thank you for following Kylie. We saw that <laughs> yes, on the weekend. No lipstick today. I'm rushing. Can you believe how much rushing I did this morning to get here? So anyway, here I am. And I kept running downstairs, get some things done. So Stacy, hello, Landy, how are you guys doing this morning? It is a nice Monday morning, the 15th. And thanks, Stacy. Welcome to the morning blessing. So let us get the show on the road. It's 7.59. Here we are. It's 8 o'clock. Do you like the topic? Pause, listen, action. Wow. Mm. So, um, Kylie reminded me I had a Christmas mug. <laughs> that is not Christmas anymore. I need a spring mug. So I have to go get a spring mug. Um, thank you, Stacy, without lipstick. Hmm. I, I like my lipstick on. So anyway, the morning blessings to you today is pause, listen, action okay so one of the things that we often do is that we forget to pause and we most certainly do not listen and some of us take action and some of us say Psh, it's not important and stuff like that so i'm here to tell you thanks Stacey, that pause when you decide i'm a good morning when you decide to pause Take action, listen, and then take action. You are in the zone. You're in the moment. Pausing is putting you in the moment. Many times we forget that we can, we are allowed to pause. We are allowed to think. We are allowed to stay in that moment. And we do not understand the importance of that moment because we were not told to ever stop. They want us to multitask. We do not even stop between one project or one moment into another we jump we are going to we're brushing our teeth but we're doing something else we're cooking in the kitchen we're doing something else whatever we do we're in the shower and we might be thinking of somebody we're going to have some words with the point the point is we should stay and pause so pause is not something anybody is trained in this world nowadays to do yet is in pausing that miracles show up in pausing and the, the if you go further back into history they always tell you of the times that pausing is important Thank you. Oh, nice to be on your time zone. Great. Are you in Toronto? <laughs> You're traveling? So let us know. So pause. Plan to pause. If you're going to plan to take time to pause, I am not talking about going for a walk. That is all. Good morning, Nancy. How are you feeling this morning? It's not going for a walk. That is not plan. That is not pausing. That is action. That is moving. That is doing something. Oh, you're in Miami. Congratulations. <laughs> That's lovely. So ways to pause. You have to decide what you're going to do. Pausing, you need to take with you a pen and paper. It is important to go with a book or a journal, anything. It doesn't matter. If you're going to pause, consider it the old-fashioned word musing. When you hear of musing, you think of the person having their pen on the side of their face like that. And it's like they're thinking, right? That's musing. So pausing is important. That's why they say you do it early in the morning. The magic hour, they say, is between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. For some, some reason, that's the magic hour of, of all the 24 hours in the day. And the, the magic happens in those 60 minutes. So some people will sit... At that time, they will wake up at five to face the morning and get into it. Some people, like I love to get up earlier. I love to, good morning, Loretta, how are you feeling? I walk out sometimes very early just to feel the air and to just, everything is quiet, it's still dark, nothing is moving, everything is just still. But I'm still not pausing, am I? I move, I'm breathing in there, I'm thinking. So pausing though is to sit. The sitting process that not the, the Western world does not like, that I am reading in a moment, is called Be Still. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> I read that long ago. And 
I got that in, in scripture about being still. We were taught to be still. As a child, because, because there were eight of us, my mom used to say, go sit and be by yourself and get to know who you are. Good morning, um, Anna. How are you feeling today, Grandma? How are you feeling today? So, yes, you need to take time to sit and just pause and, and let the energy come to you. Do not go looking for it. You're not chasing anything. You're not supposed to rush into anything. Pausing is important because when you sit and you're still, they tell you be still and know. So why don't we listen to that? Be still to know. Whenever you have something that is happening and you do not understand what you should do, pull back, stop. They say it in a, in a confrontation, live to fight another day. Say no and move yourself back. Good morning, Arita. How are you feeling this morning? And listen to what's going on. Observe. But in this case, it's just listening, listening. And you have a pen and a book. And I told you guys of my experience at St. Michael's Cathedral in Toronto. I walked into church, milling to kneel down and pray and tell God all what is wrong and all what he should fix. That was what I was at that time. That's what we were taught. That's still what we are taught. I don't do that though. I changed because that day, that particular day, I walked in and I was told to shut up, sit down and listen. And that was the thought that came to my head. It wasn't, there were people there. It wasn't a mass. It was just time for relaxation, quietness. You sit and absorb. But I wasn't. I was like everybody else and I'm ready to tell God what I need him to do and not to do and all of that. Like I was waiting for him to do the laundry, although I was the one who used the clothes. So I was told to shut up, sit down, we want to talk to you. And I have told you guys, it was the, the day my life changed. My actual behavior, my thought process, my understanding, everything became clear to me at that time. And it was nobody there. It was just in my head. But I had gathered if all the praying I had done, or all the meditation, or all the things I had done, somewhere along the line, something sipped in that told me, pay attention and do, hi, Yuko, good morning. How are you feeling? Pay attention and listen. So I did. I sat there. And then when I realized words were coming into my head that, I, that they weren't familiar to me, and some of them were really tiny and simple. Some of them were just profound. I had a pad in my hand and I started to write. And I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And it was just what was spilling into me. But that became the plan for who I am today. That changed my life. I was going to go through changes anyway, physical change. But at that time, a different understanding came into me. And I believe it was when wisdom knocked in. Wisdom will come. They say you should seek it. But in seeking it, you have to listen. So the pause allowed me to write what I heard. But I had the book. I was prepared. So when you're looking for answers or you do not know what to do, or you find that you're hitting your head against a wall, or no matter how hard you push, nothing is happening. And you stand still, it is not happy for you. Like, if you do not do something, you will not be happy. That's me. But I needed to, to listen instead of going on with what is in my head. And sometimes we, the older generation would say that common sense is higher than education. Book smart lets you into the door. Common sense gets you to manage inside the door. So... You, we had, good, hi, Angelina, good morning, long time to see, how are you feeling today? Um, so you are sitting here, and you're in, you're pausing. Pausing is not walking. Pausing is sitting and letting the things that comes to your mind be transferred from your mind into pages on a book that you're writing. Do not question it. That is where we lose what we are supposed to do, because we stop. And we, we, we dismiss it. And sometimes when you, when you do that, you're going to get those little nuggets that you, that you need. Something just to push you forward. I, Rita, and something to let you know, hey, it's okay. What you're doing is just grand. And that is why it's important for you. 
in the north woods oh that's really nice nancy so one of the things you have to we have to remember is get that book get that pen and begin to write whatever that comes into our mind that day at that moment no it does not have to be ours many times we believe that if we're going to sit in stillness and silence we need to be there for hours you're not a guru you're not a monk you're not one of those your priests or none the people that do that every day you have a life that's busy you have things to do so therefore you need to set the time um and it doesn't mean it has to be the morning only i i like the morning but i do it during the day and i also during before bed so basically, I do it three times a day. And it's not for 100 minutes. Maybe it's 10 minutes in the morning, five in the middle of the day or less, and five at night for sure. I muse in that thing. I sit and I think. And I let my mind go. And as my mind is going, I'm writing down what I, what I receive. Many of what I get during that time, I use it in my daily life. It might be get, get up and go outside. Get up early and go stand and breathe the air. We believe in energy, but we do not practice using energy to get us energized, to move into the direction in which we go. So when you sit and you listen in that moment and you is pausing, purposely putting your feet down, your bum on a chair or where and sit. Not don't lie down. Do something that is just for you. What to do? Breathe. Let your mind go for a few seconds. Our mind never shuts up. So let it go its own way. It's going to gallop. It is supposed to. That's what mind is supposed to do. If it stops, you know you have, we have a problem. Something health is breaking down. Sit. Do not walk during pausing. Use it to muse, to reflect. So when we reflect, we look outside of us. Remember that. So you can muse. And musing might be funny. Musing might make you do this. You might hug yourself. Musing might make you feel, oh, you're amazing, beautiful and spectacular. Musing might force you to breathe a little deeper. Musing might make you raise your head and look at, at this, you know, that pose we take when we're just in that moment. That's musing. And musing is good because it, it sends a different type of energy of joy through us at that time. So then after you, if you want to muse, then reflect. Look, at, look, look around you. Look outside of you. Look at your last behavior on the outside. How did you react to somebody who maybe needed you or an advice? Did you give it? That is reflecting on my actions. You're reflecting, what did I do? How did I respond to that? that was that my best moment? That's reflection. No. The part that will turn up in writing is the inflection. Where you go in, you go in. The minute you have done the pausing, you breathe, you muse a little, and you just reflect on what yesterday was like, what last night, what early this morning was like. And now you're in the moment. You're inside. And you're listening to the thoughts that come through. And this is what you write down. Whether they sound silly, whether you are, you see what you do, you're practicing to listen to your inner self. That's where your answers come from. You're practicing to listen to what the universe has to say. I listen to hear what the guidance from God, my angels is coming through to me today. That's what I listen for. But you can listen for anything. The thing that is the most challenging thing for us is that we do not trust it. We do not believe that we are good enough to have this type of guidance show up to help us live a better life. It would go to those people that are pious, the preacher that knows the Bible backwards and forward. That's what we believe. That person, because my, like my mother said, you read that book yourself and deduce from it what you, what you, want, what you find. It's not, hi, Kia, oh my goodness, congratulations, welcome, long time no see. What happens when a woman is working, a businesswoman out there? So step up and read it yourself and get your inspiration from it. That's what she says. So we need to pause. The pausing is what is important. We breathe, 
we pause and then we muse a little and we smile at the musing. We could be uh, something sweet and generous, a hug, a kiss, something that happened, a nice word, somebody that stood up for you, helped you, smiled for you, called you, reflect on that, you, you, you muse on that. Then you reflect on your action. How did I respond? How did I respond when somebody reached out to me? How did I respond when somebody came towards me and just blessed me? Did I take it or did I poo poo it? Did I tell them, you know what, I don't, I'm not in, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Look at that. And at that time, look at, if you can reflect on it, look at your energy. How is that energy of yours? Does it look good? Ah, that is not good energy, is it? But we use it so often. This third one is you and yourself alone. You're inflecting. And you listen to what comes out of it. Next time, do this. This time, do that. Write it down. No matter how silly it may seem, write it down. I've told you guys of my stories of this thing so many times and the stories of others who shared with me, who I taught to listen and follow the direction. Now, once you have done all that, when you inflict, you're going, when you inflict, you're going inside, inside of yourself. Listen. When you, after you pause, you will start listening. The listening is where is write what you hear. Do not doubt anything. Write it all down. How long? Go with your feeling. The thing about all of this, the length of time you spend listening is how you feel. The thing about anything we do, the more we do it, the consistency of doing it, the, 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 the perseverance to do it, because consistency is one thing. You do it every day. Persevering through it is when it is difficult. Hi, Jilly. Is when it is difficult for you to do it. And that is what we have to remember. So consistency is pausing, taking the time to pause. Do all the things to pause. You leave you in there and you relax, you breathe. You're listening to what's going on. And then you hear, shut up and write. You write. Do not doubt that your ability, because what you're getting is too high. Oh, no, that is me, me messy. I'm so important, I can create it. Listen, watch the words. Watch the words and see how, if you would write like that. And it might be very simple, or it might be a big word that you have never heard before. And if you write it down and you check the dictionary, you'll see, oh, that, that word exists. So you know it's not you thinking of it all by yourself. Because you went in there purposely to listen, to get guidance. But you can ask a question. When you are listening, you can ask, if you were me, how would you manage this? And write down what you got. If you were me, how would you do this? If you were me, what would you say? Should I do this? If you were me, would you do this? It's maybe silly. You can write the question down and you can wait for the answer. But do not put yourself above yourself by saying, oh, that is just my silly head, it's me. It's not always all about us doing it. We have help. I always say we are not supposed to be as challenged as we allow ourselves to be because we choose not to go internally and get the help we seek. So when we take, we listen. And we get answers from inside of us. That's the answer we need. We do not pay attention to that because we were not taught to believe we are good enough. But the most important thing, you're welcome. Okay, as long as you're here, you're here at the right time. The most important thing to do is to write it down and do not question it. And that is the first thing to do. Write it down. The more we do those two, pause, and the pausing of how you pause. Hi, Ezra, good morning. Write down what you listen and you hear. Write it down. No matter what it sounds like, no matter how stupid it is, your, your mind is going to always be ready to give you the answers for the things you desire. The thing is, you do not trust the answer you get when you sit and you ask, what should I do? How should I behave? Where should I go? Instead, 
we go and we ask others, believing they are better suited to answer questions on our behalf. Questions we are afraid to go in and ask ourselves. But the thing is, whereas we will not follow our own guidance and our own thought, we will follow what that person says who is not in the situation. And that is so silly. We believe that person knows better than us. We do not trust the inner self to answer because that is in inflecting we will get an answer. We already paused. We did the breathing. We control, we, we, we listened to the mind for what it was doing. We spoke, we, 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 we paused. We came prepared, we had our book and our pen. We breathe. We let our mind go for a minute. We sit, we're not walking. We are pausing. We do a little musing. We smile at our life or just a funny little thing that passed through our mind, we smile. Then we reflect on how we have behaved in the past 24 hours. And then we go in and we inflect, and then the answers start to come. And they might not sound like answers to any question you have had before. They might just be, do this, write this down, call this person. It might be silly, 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 silly. But you write it down. And that is the best way to do it. You are inflecting. And maybe, you know, this is when it really starts to work is when somebody calls you and that person tells you exactly what you wrote down without them knowing. That happens, you know. They might say, you know what, I was thinking of you and I'm wondering why you don't do this or you should do that. And that is the confirmation. And you have to pay attention to those moments and you have to look at that person. That person is not a critic of yours. That person does not tell you you're, good, you're, you're not good enough. That person does not tell you you do not have superpowers. That person agrees with you. That person is a little bit aligned with you. You guys seem to be going in the same direction. And that person will say, hi, Peter, good morning, that you should do this. So when you pause and then you, you get your book and you start listening to what is coming into your mind and you start to write it down, do not disregard it. And if somebody says to you, you know what, Ezra, I, I thought you should do that. I'm thinking of something. And you haven't said to them what you were looking for. And you haven't said to them that you've written something in your book, in your, uh, in your journal, about how, what something that came to mind. And then the person tells you the same thing. When that happens, that is when the, the miracles start to flow in your life. Now you know you are aligned because that energy that gave you the energy, whether you believe it's God in the prophet, the universe, the cow, the moon, the sun, the stars, I don't care. The point of it, what happened is that that energy has contacted another energy to reinforce you. That is important. That reinforcement you're getting from the person who says it is the best thing for you to do. Why don't you do that? They didn't know you were in meditation. They did not know you paused earlier this morning. They did not know that you muse, that you listen, you smile. They did not know that you reflect on your actions of yesterday. They did not know that you were inflecting and it's inflection. You got that and they're telling you the same thing you have written in that book. That is when you march into the moment with all what you have and make sure you follow it. Just follow it. Do not question it. That is training and that is the beginning of the miracle that will make your life different. Listen right what you hear. Do not doubt anything. Write it all down. How long? Go with the feeling. It's always our feeling. And then that is where we fail. The thing you heard and wrote down that you remember, do it first. So I don't know what you will get. I don't know. I can't tell you. I can only say of some of my experiences that I've had. One of them for sure is to turn around and look at things and say, this is what to do. Many times as I'm going through my journey, it will tell me, don't do that. Stop here. Do that. But I do it so often three times a day. I do 10 minutes of just that in the morning. I do a minute in a case of a situation that has come up. You know what? What should I do now? 
Sometimes you will not believe, is it to create a shot right after that? Or is it to go do something or prepare something to eat? The point is I ask the question. And because it's becoming a habit. So that gives me, in that moment, I'm pausing. I'm not rushing to do something. I'm pausing. And then we take action. That is the one where we fail. And yet, we have all that pile of information and we do not take action. We, we, we lose our North Star. We, know, we lose our projection. We lose our, until we look and we see somebody else is consistently doing what they're supposed to do and they're succeeding and we maybe and then we lose again because now we sit and wonder about them when it's really not our business we need to learn to stay in our lane our path might be rockier than theirs our journey has to might be to action might be rough it might be 10 times no before we get a yes but that shouldn't stop us from going back and being persistent, P pushing at it, saying, I, I need it. You have to yield to me because you got the inspiration already. You, you planned this and now you're falling back and not taking action on what you planned. This doesn't make sense. But we do it all the same and pausing. Is not multitasking. Listening is not is not multitasking. You listen to children and you work your way from that child that just starts talking all the way to the top until you know exactly what it is. The universe taps someone to push me towards my goal. Yes, the universe will do that. God will do that. Your angels will do that. You, you know, you have to, when things, I have a friend and she said to me, you know what, every, I'm always spilling water. I'm always, water is always, it's me, anytime there's water, I am in, and it's spilling, it's there, I pick a cup, it spills, it spills, it spills. So I said, well, <laughs> this was not nice, but that's what I said. I said, do you have a shower every day? <laughs> she said, no. I said, the gods of water want you to go wet yourself. <laughs> so anyway, it sounds like disgusting, but that you asked me, I'm going to tell you, right? So that was what came to my mind. I said, why don't you shower every day? So she went and she started practicing it. She called me a few, maybe December, and she told me, you know, since I started showering every day, I don't spill water anywhere. And I, I go, really? She said, yes. So that is what I'm trying to say to you. When you notice something has constantly happened to you, like in her case, she could have gotten an answer herself if she only knew how to pause and then listen, pause. And in pausing, she could have asked a question. Why, what, why am I spilling water everywhere? If I have a glass, it falls. If I'm sitting, the water falls. Uh, it's like you need to be wet. So she could have found out herself. Do you see the universe is pop. You, you think that universe does not joke. We are the fools that do not follow the inspirations we get. And the action. That is the thing I don't understand. You know what you should do. You don't do it. Because you believe there is somebody else coming to do it for you. Or you believe the person over there. I'll call you. I'll, I will have an answer. No. She called me and I just happened to tell her what I heard in my head. And I let her have it, and she, it, I said, I don't know, you might, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know how it is. Go shower. And anyway, she did, and there we are. But what we must remember, everybody, I will go over it again. We need to take time to pause. We need to take time to pause. Just pause, just stop. And it doesn't have to be for an hour. Give yourself five minutes of pausing. And just breathe into the pausing. Then listen. Get your book. Do not, if you're going to sit to pause, bring water with you and a book and a pen. You are always thirsty when you're pausing. Because your mind is pulling energy from every part of your body. And you will sip on the water. Write in your goal setting journal or whatever. Not even your goals. A journal. I don't care what. On your back. On your thigh. <laughs> on your arm. Write what you're hearing pay attention to it 
do not believe you're so brilliant that all that is coming just from you. Yes, it may be ease, but it's coming from the universe, from God, the energy, your angels. You believe, and yet you do not want to take action from what you heard. You're waiting for something to happen, to knock you over. Well, there is not always going to be that kind of miracle. Miracles comes in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are really tiny, but they lead to big things. Your feeling is what is important. Is how long is how you feel. Then the action, because you have written it down, you will have it to take to remember what it is. That's why when you're walking and you get an inspiration, that can happen. You're going for a walk or you're in the shower, you, 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 you find something to write it down. Because you, as I'm telling you from experience, you will forget it. You won't remember. You certainly won't remember that you got this thing and you were busy doing something. If you're cooking, wipe your hands, get a pen and paper, write it down, record it. Because that is how it happens. So, pause, listen, and take action. Our weakest of the three is action. The second is listening and then pause. We don't do that because we weren't taught to pause. And so my favorite place to pause is close to moving water. Me too. I love it. I love the fountains. I love sitting and I, I think I was not having a water, water nymph. Is that what they call them? I think I was one of those water people. And yet, I am a Mayborn, terra firma, but I love water. So, earth and water. So, that's my... Well, yeah, the garden, right? I'm crazy in the garden. And then the water thing. It's so nice. So, you pause, try it. And always... The, another thing I recommend, always have a notebook in your car and a pen where you can reach it. I like to keep mine on this front seat next to me. And when I get, if something pops in, when I get to the stoplight, I might write two words, but that might be just enough to enable me to, to pull it back. Because many times, like you will notice if you are speaking from energy and you're speaking from this type of, of thing that you're reflecting and inflecting and using, you will not remember what you've said. You will not remember. Spring is a great time to pause and see the birds come and inspire you. It does, because that's what is in the world. It's, it's already, I have to go to get fertilizer for my rose bushes because they already, they have leaves, tiny leaves on them and dish. But we've had so much rain, I didn't want to just pour the, put the fertilizer there, you know. But now the roots are soft. It will absorb the, the, the um, fertilizer better if you've had a lot of rain. So now is a good time to do that. So that's one of my, my projects and to trim for the week. So it's going to be fun doing that. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for dropping in today. I appreciate you and I'm happy and grateful that each and every one of you came here. I love those of you that come and when you say good morning to each other, it's such a nice feeling. It's connection and I love it. When you guys come in and you have something to say, thank you for doing that. Because it's really a conversation, although I am only the only one speaking. <laughs> so one of these days, I'll give you guys notice and I will take, well, there can be four people on. Lovely Monday to all. Thank you. Thank you, Amma. Thank you, Yuko. I would love for you guys to come pop in and share a, a morning ritual. Because somebody might want to do one of your morning routines and they do not know. Thank you for, have a blessed day, Lon. And Marina, you are our muse. <laughs> oh, indeed. I love that. Thank you. So yeah, I might pull and say, who wants to join me? And have a chat. So put on your, your makeup if you want to do that. Today, no lipstick. Hmm. Thanks, Kia. Take care. And let me say goodbye to all of you. Hi, Kia, Stacy, Nancy, Amma, Rita, Yuko, Angelina, Peter, Marina, Healy, Loretta, and Londi. Thank you, guys. And Peter, it's night time, too, in Malaysia. So thank you for coming and spending this time. Um, if you got something today, I may, I may miss the, the live morning blessing so much. I've, oh, you miss it. Well, yeah, because you're working. You are a working woman putting, helping to put the family together. That's great. We, you know what? You got there long enough to get inspired and to get a little thought and to decide you can do something 
and you took step to do it. And that's all that matters is the action. So if you miss it, you miss coming to the live every morning to be in with us, that's great. But be grateful that you did get the opportunity to be there. Always be grateful for what opportunities you had and those you will get again. Have a great day. Talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.